Welcome back, I'm Alex, and we're in the shop today with this little weapon here behind me. And wouldn't you know, GM dropped some big news about their next generation of V8 engines apparently going into these trucks as soon as 2027. They invested almost a billion dollars into the next generation of V8 engines, and I want to break down a couple things, both good and maybe not so good. Now, to think this news dump is a little bit random would probably be naive. If you don't live under a rock, you're probably well aware of the PR nightmare that is currently unfolding with the larger 6.2 liter V8 engines from GM. And this could be a great way to get people to talk about something else, something a little bit positive. So here we are talking about it. Fellas, almost 85% of you guys watching are not currently subscribed. So if you like stuff like this, please consider subscribing. Also, I do have a TikTok and an Instagram page where we have a little bit more hands-on content. Lastly, if you're looking for oil, you can become one of my preferred customers at amsoil.com and get yourself a nice little discount. Everything will be below in the description. So the good, and I love this move by GM. I gotta give them their flowers because it is a rather bold move in this modern engine climate to dump $888 million into building brand new big displacement V8 engines when the rest of the industry is turning to smaller displacement turbocharged engines, hybrid, or even full out electric powertrain. So I love this move by GM. Now Ram and Stellantis said it was not possible and made no sense to reinvest in the Hemi V8 engine platform because they could not make them meet emissions. Well, now they do seem pretty gung-ho to bring those Hemi engines back in to the Ram 1500 lineup after the sales figures weren't so great with the turbo engine. Thankfully, GM has said no to replacing their old faithful American V8 engine in place to a smaller displacement turbocharged engine like Stellantis did. Instead, GM is freaking doubling down, baby, and producing more big displacement V8 engines. And now, yes, they do produce a 2.7 liter turbo max, which is a turbocharged engine, but moving forward, you will still be able to get a V8 engine in your Chevy pickup truck. Next, and you'll love to see it for my fellow American friends, GM ain't taking their money elsewhere. They are reinvesting it into American manufacturing, dumping all this money into the Tonawanda engine plant in beautiful Buffalo, New York. And this engine plant has a long history of building engines. Tonawanda was built in 1938 to produce axles as well as GM's six cylinder engines. But in 1942, they shut their doors to civilian production because of the Second World War, instead producing artillery shells, tanks, and aircraft engines like the Pratt & Whitney radial engines, which made its way into the P-47 Thunderbolt fighter plane, as well as the B-24 heavy bomber. So like I said, there is a colorful past to this engine plant building engines. Over the 87 year history, they've made a variety of engines from small V6 engines, small block V8s, as well as big block V8s and some famous GM muscle cars. Currently, they actually make this engine right now, the Ecotec 3 or the fifth gen V8 engines. And it's nice to see GM investing that money close to home. Now, here's what GM officially said about the introduction or the unveiling of the new sixth generation V8 engine. And to me, this is where the rubber meets the road. Quote, this new generation of engine is expected to deliver stronger performance than today's engines while benefiting fuel economy and reducing emissions. New combustion and thermal management innovations are a key factor driving these improvements. Now, interestingly enough, there was zero mention of increased reliability, increased durability, because if I'm going to be completely honest, this fifth gen Ecotec engine, this thing sitting right here in this truck is not what I would consider a reliable engine, especially with the valve train issues, which we all know, and we'll discuss that just in a second. But secondly, because of what has transpired with the 6.2 liter V8, I don't know, maybe they're not trying to shed more light on that problem, I'm talking about reliability and durability, but I sort of would have expected strong language towards durability and reliability in their next generation of V8 engines, but I guess not. I don't want to make a mount out of a molehill, it's just one quote, but the fact that they did say that the main highlights of the engine are fuel economy and reduced emissions to me is just not really what I wanted to hear. To me, that signals that cylinder deactivation technology is most likely gonna be part of the sixth generation engine as well as thin or thinner oil and whatever other fuel improvement techniques they can do to increase the bottom line 
fuel economy, the thermal management and the combustion improvements could be interesting. We'll have to see exactly what they mean by that. I get it. Done are the days where people don't care about fuel economy in their full size trucks. The numbers are out. It's pretty clear that fuel economy does help to sell new trucks. It is interesting though, they mentioned reduced emissions. I was under the assumption that the new US administration was going to be somewhat reversing the EPA emission policies, but it does seem like it is still on the top of the agenda for a lot of these manufacturers. I've said it before, but when a manufacturer is focused on fuel economy, reducing emissions, it doesn't make it seem like they're really trying to improve reliability or durability. In fact, in my opinion, if you're trying to squeeze every single drop of fuel economy out of an engine, you're probably going to be reducing the reliability along the way. Here is what I would have loved to have heard from GM, something along these lines, quote, we are making the most dependable, powerful, durable V8 engines in the truck segment because here at GM, we take pride in building the best V8 engines in America. Boom. That would have lit the internet up like a Christmas tree. We would have been in there talking about how GM is now taking their engines seriously. And I think it would have got a lot of people very excited about the next generation of V8 engines. Getting down to business, here's three things that I really, really wanna see with this next generation of V8 engine from GM. First of all, these next generation of engines better freaking come with direct injection alongside port injection. Those engines better be dual injection. Engines like Ford and Toyota have been doing for years now. All the gas engines GM offers in this truck segment are only direct injection. And there's a number of benefits, but also problems. The number one issue is carboning up of the intake in the intake valves, and that can easily be solved by adding port injection alongside direct injection. I've been hounding this point for years now, but it's not only just carbon buildup. Port and direct injection has benefits of fuel economy because at low loads, you can just simply use a lot more of the port injection. It's gonna give you better fuel economy. Also, it reduces emissions at low loads when you can use port injection more heavily. It reduces NOx gases, which is what GM's looking to do. So if GM does not come out with port and direct injection on these V8 engines, I think it is a massive miss. Next is the lifter problems. Again, if you haven't been living under a rock, you know that these V8 engines are notorious for lifter or valve train failures. And I'm fully prepared for the sixth generation, the new generation of GM V8 engines to come with cylinder deactivation technology. However, I think they need to heavily overhaul their valve train or at least the lifters because it is just simply unacceptable to have these new generation of valve trains to have the same failures that these engines are undergoing. It is such a well-documented problem and it needs to be resolved, no questions asked. Lastly, I hope stronger performance means more power, baby, because this 5.3 liter V8, which has been making these same power figures since 2014, has fallen behind the competition. If this 5.3 isn't making around 400 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque, again, I think that's gonna be rather disappointing. If GM can implement those three things on my Christmas list, dual injection, valve train overhaul, as well as more power in the 5.3 specifically, I think they're gonna have a pretty darn competitive V8 engine moving forward. Lastly, before I let you get out of here, Tim from Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, fantastic YouTube channel. You guys should all be subscribed to it. He mentioned that there is a strong possibility that GM is looking to potentially have this new generation of V8 engine have the ability to be electrified, potentially a hybrid platform, which I think would be the first V8 hybrid in this segment. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but that could excite some people, not really myself, but I think it is a strong possibility that GM is probably looking to do that as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think. Are you excited about this next generation of V8 engine from GM? Do you like that they're sticking with the V8 engine? I certainly do. Or are you worried that we're gonna see more of the same just unreliable engine production moving forward. If you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, do not subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna help support the channel. You can become one of my preferred customers at amsoil.com.
www.ethicalcoaching.com. Enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.